Hi there, my name is Andrew and uh, I'm going to be showing you how to add decks in Keyforge for Tabletop Simulator. To start out with, I'm actually going to make a separate folder to keep my Keyforge decks in, separate from other saved things. So uh, to do that, the default location for this, uh, if, you, if you in Windows go to this PC in uh, File Explorer, go to documents. This should be under your user. You should find my games and under my games, you can find tabletop simulator inside of tabletop simulator. Uh, you can find saves and then saved objects. Under here is where we're going to create a new folder. We're going to call it Keyforge. Maybe we should properly capitalize it. You know what? While I'm while I'm at it, let's just make that two. And uh, move. This is a deck that I made earlier, but I'm going to make another one here. To show you how it's done. So now we have nice little folders here. You can close that. Um, once you're on Steam, you can click on Tabletop Simulator, and uh, in order to install Keyforge, you're going to have to install it through Workshop. So from Tabletop Simulator, we can click over here on Links and go to Community Hub. From Community Hub, look on the top for workshop and here you can find a lot of a lot of cool stuff here in the search area I'll type Keyforge and I haven't actually looked at these other two yet the better tokens or single deck uh, I've only tried super Keyforge so it seems really useful so maybe even super now when you first get here it should if you hover your mouse over it show you this little plus symbol and uh, once you click on it, you'll subscribe, and now it'll be a, an unsubscribe button. So once you subscribe, then uh, Steam will have to download that content because this is actually uh, some content for the for Tabletop Simulator that'll have to be downloaded. So if you click uh, hover, hover over Library and click on Downloads, you can see it happening. Mine already did it earlier, so go back to Library Games, click on. Uh, tabletop simulator and run now or play so again you need you need the content to be installed and, and then go ahead and launch it so uh, play tabletop simulator this will take just a second and then the next thing I'm going to show you is how to start a server which um, if you're not new to tabletop simulator then this this won't seem particularly fancy to you but we'll go through it anyway so here I'm going to click create and uh, I'll let this be a multiplayer server because if you want to play with somebody else, that's that's what you need. So two is really the ideal number of players. Now, earlier I could actually change that. I don't know why it's stuck on two now. Oh, there it is. I can change it. Okay. Anyway, but two is two is good. So we're going to leave it at two. Uh, name of the server. Server password if you just want to make sure only your friend gets in and you don't want to have to kick somebody out. Great, but no big deal. Uh, if you want to play with somebody random, then you probably shouldn't have this here. You can also, there's a server browser here. I'll just show you that really quick. If you click on join, then you can find other servers. So I might click here on uh, uh, search and search for Keyforge. And some people are, are playing. So that's cool. But I'm going to go ahead and create. Oh, and if you were, if you create one and your friend wants to join, you can click down here on friends only and you would just see the server that your friend set up. So, all right, so now I'm gonna create a server, click on multiplayer, set it to two, and uh, create the server. Now, uh, the, f the first time that you do this, once you've installed Keyforge, is you'll actually need to go to uh, workshop, click on workshop, and then click on super Keyforge. But notice, notice that since I've done it a couple times, there's, uh, you know, it, it knows that 
I might want to jump in. Oh, and this is, yeah, I set up a deck earlier. Uh, that's funny. Let's, uh... I'm actually just going to delete all this stuff. If you ho hover your mouse over something and delete, it'll go away. All right. So, now we're here. And uh, I want to I want to add this deck. So this is actually uh, my brother-in-law's deck that I'm going to be adding. It's called the Crony that gnaws on the Proletariat. And the easiest way to do this is just to do it by house. So I'm going to start with Brobnar. He has some Brobnar cards. And over here on this left side, from where you start, from where you spawn in, you can see uh, decks that have. So far, I think all the cards. So I'm going to right click on Brobnar and go into search. And this should allow me to pretty easily uh, find out. Oh, I should double check here just in case. W, A, S, and D are how you move around. So I think you can use, oh, the arrow keys actually change the rotation. So pitch and uh, yaw. Anyway, W, A, S, and D, move around. All right, so I right-click on Brobnar, click on Search, and then the cards are organized here by card number as set by FFG. And uh, so if you're you know trying to add from your Archon card, then th that's super convenient. All right, so I'm going to start with Anger and um, grab it. If you just grab and drag, click and drag, uh, you can bring it on the table like this. And once I've done that, um, I actually need two of them. So I'm going to hover my mouse over it, press Control C to copy for my mouse somewhere else, say Control V. Boom, I have two. And I'll just drag the first one onto the second. As long as they're close to lined up, they'll just turn into a deck. So now I have two cards in there. All right, next I want a copy of Blood Money. Two copies of Coward's End. So again, here I'll put it on the table, Control C, Control B. You can even do that right on the deck and it'll just drop in. So now I have two copies of Coward's End in there. Uh, get a copy of Follow the Leader. Sound the Horns. Gauntlet of Command. Valder. Two Ginger Chieftains. And a troll. Oops. Where is troll? There it is. All right. And notice I accidentally uh, use my scroll wheel on the table, and that that zooms in and out. All right. So now I have twelve cards. That's good. So uh, next, I need some dis cards. So I'll right click on the dis deck over here and go to search. Uh, now, one thing to be careful if you're like doing this you know, in a shared space with somebody else, uh, obviously if you're, um, if you're grabbing cards and, you know, pulling them out, then that, that might make the other person sad. So just find a way to, to work together, maybe copy everything before you put it in and put it back. Um, or you could just, uh, you know, copy these and each work with a separate one, copy the, the big decks. Um, all right, so I need two copies of Arise. One copy of Fear. A Hysteria. A Mind Barb. Pandemonium. Dominator Bobble. Key to Dis. Where's the key to that? Life word. Soul snatcher. Ember imp. And tentacus. So I should have 24 now. Good. We, we're good so far. All right. Mars. Shatterstorm. Oh, am I on the 
missing something here. Hmm. Oh, oh. Looks like we're actually missing Shatterstorm. So uh, we'll have to figure that out later. Let's go on to the next card, Squawker. I'm just going to add Ammonia Clouds. And uh, we'll pretend that's Shatterstorm for now. But we'll, we'll just have to change it later. All right. Two copies of Squawker. A Mind Warper. Is. Tunk. Well, I feel like I've, I've maybe I've just really lost my place in here. Yeah, there. Tunk. Maybe I'll just search for everything from here out. Ulick Mega Mouth. Two of them. Uxlix the Zookeeper. The Zyma Think Drone. Zizix the Many. And two Biomatrix backups. So 36 cards there. And uh, once again, we, we have this problem with uh, accidentally having ammonia instead of Shatterstorm, but that's okay. So once I, I have it here, um, what I'll go ahead and do is flip it. So to flip it, I'll hold my mouse over it and just press F. That flips the deck, uh, and then I can right-click it and save object. I'll change the folder to Keyforge, and we'll just call it Crony. And we will give it the full name, the Crony that gnaws on the, oops. Is that, is that right to capitalize on the and not capitalize that? Seems, seems sketchy, but maybe I'm, maybe I'm misremembering some rules there. Anyway, save that. And, uh, there's my, there's my friend's deck. Now, once you're in the game, uh, well, I'll go ahead and let's say this is mine. Um, if you want to shuffle, what you do is go ahead and click and hold so you pick up the thing. If you just uh, click and pull off the, the top, you know, the mouse away from it really quickly, click and pull, uh, you'll actually just draw a card. But um, if you click and pick it up, you can shake it to shuffle. Or you can just right click it and shuffle. And I mean, really, like, there, there's no, does R do it? No. Uh, you know, there's, there's no, it's not like, oh, that was only for a second. It didn't shuffle it much. It's, it's an algorithm. It's, it's just going to shuffle it. It's going to randomize it. So, uh, once you, once you have that, you can put it here in your deck space. You don't really need the identity card per se. And then, um, then we should be good to go to, you know, if I'm going to draw my, opening hand, I can hover my mouse over this deck and just press seven. That'll pick up seven cards. Just like that. Pretty good, huh? Uh, now, if, if uh, you start out and, you know, you're on the wrong team, you can, uh, you can click the name up here in the top right, click on change color, and now I'll just switch to blue. Puts me on the other side of the table. I'm going to go ahead and load in the deck that I set up earlier. So I'll click up here on objects, saved objects, and uh, under Keyforge, I can find Falloposh. There we go. Um, Q will rotate that thing. Then uh, I'll shuffle it, put it here. And then hit six to load my starting hand. If you need to roll, if you want to roll before you pick up, you know, Steve goes first. You can shake a die, roll it. That's pretty nice. 
or just right click it and roll. Good randomness there. And uh, yeah, okay, as far as um, you know, playing stuff, now here's a nice thing. Notice now that I'm over here on this side of the table, the uh, player one's hand is uh, you know, hidden from me. I can't see it. Now I could, I can even flip cards and I still can't see it. It's hidden. That's pretty cool. And notice, yeah, the, the hand is a special area. Um, so if I want to play a card out, I can just, you know, click and drag it from my hand onto the table. If that card's on the table and you're like, oh gosh, I can't even see it. You can hold your mouse over it and press Z. That'll zoom in, toggle zoom, press Z again to zoom out. Or I can just hold M and that uh, that magnifies. So it should be pretty easy. You can again you can scroll in and out too, but you know Z and, and M are faster ways to deal with it. Uh, if I need a counter of some sort, I can just uh, gra drag it from one of these bags, just like drawing a card. You know, like click and and uh, drag it away. Um, there we go. Once I have forged a key, I know. You, it looks like you could just do that and it'd be so cool, but it doesn't, doesn't work that way. Uh, once a key is forged, you know, I can just delete the tokens that, uh, you know, hold the mouse over and press the delete button to get rid of those and then flip a key. So pretty easy to do and, uh, you know, damage, all that stuff. Um, <laughs> even, you know, if a card got purged, you can even just do that, delete it, um, I guess it's okay as long as you, know, you just need to reload your deck later. Not a big deal. Uh, I'm not a big fan of, especially the the stun card here. Just seems oh stun stun actually seems okay, but the the power card um, seems a little a little big for what it does. To be honest, so we might even like uh, uh, make that a little smaller with minus and just you know. Uh, hmm. Let's see if I can get a yeah, get a creature out, get a creature, get my power cards on there. That's pretty good. That's not bad. I can I can live with that. Anyway, uh, you don't have to do that. Manage your chains over this way, and uh, you're you're pretty good to go. If you lose, you know you can you can always flip the table. That's pretty strong. And that's it. That's that's how to set up a deck and load it and play it with a friend in Keyforge on Tabletop Simulator. Enjoy and keep forging those keys.